problem with how the world deals with waste is absolutely massive. Hundreds of millions of tons of potentially reclaimable material get landfilled or incinerated each year. If you could take a large fraction of that material and have it reused or recycled, you start to see a path to gigatons of emissions being avoided. We are reimagining the world's recycling infrastructure. I grew up mostly here in uh, Boulder, Colorado and Denver, Colorado. I guess I'm a little bit of a Colorado cliche. I've sort of become this REI buying camping dude and all I want to do is get outside. Now that I have a daughter of my own, it is really meaningful to know that the experiences I've had being able to go into the wilderness and the character of the Colorado landscape is something that I'm helping preserve for her. I was always interested in robots as a kid. I just thought they were the coolest thing. Things like Transformers or Voltron. When I went to undergrad, I was really interested in this idea of what creates intelligence. I then later went to graduate school to study for my PhD in control theory, which is essentially the mathematics that underpins robotics. I really started looking for areas where I thought deep learning and artificial intelligence could be useful. In recycling, there was this huge need for computer vision. And if you could make a vision system that could identify material even though it's smashed and folded and dirty, it could solve huge problems for the recycling industry and make recycling the dominant form of how we deal with waste rather than something that's more of a fractional part of the waste ecosystem. Something that a lot of people don't realize is that this material they put in the recycling bin really has value. The problem is that the cost of extracting these materials relies a great deal on manual labor. If you can automate this and reduce the cost of extracting these commodities, recycling starts to become this phenomenal business. What you'll see for each of our systems is a vision system up front, and it's looking at each individual piece of material. A little bit down the conveyor belt from there, you'll actually see the robot itself that is taking advantage of this information to do sorting. Thousands or tens of thousands of items, and then they send it to what's called a baler, and they create these huge compressed cubes of each commodity that they can then sell. Every piece of technology that we've deployed is networked together, and they all can upload examples of different objects. We then have algorithms and humans that go through this data set and say, oh, this is a bottle, this is a can, and create this big database of examples of all of these different materials. How many objects has our system identified? And right now that number sits at over 50 billion. That gets downloaded to all of our pieces of tech. All of them are using common neural networks that have learned from one another. So we have systems in Japan that have learned from robots in the United States. We have robots in the United States that have learned from systems in Europe. And then that information can be used in a number of different ways. How many bottles came through? How many cans came through? What's the purity of this paper stream? That data can also be used to guide a robot to actually pick out contaminants or pick out the good stuff. So you can see things like coffee cups or yogurt tubs that are getting recycled much more often now. And in some places that is because of our robotic systems. I think we'll continue to see broader and broader classes of material that you're allowed to now put in the recycling bin and have assurance that it's going to be diverted from the landfill. Over the next several years, you can see a pretty clear and reasonable path to millions of tons of CO2 saves. And then if we do what we're really aiming for, hundreds of millions of tons. The hope for AMP is that we help drive the recycling industry to be a much bigger part of the waste management infrastructure. We want a world where materials are by default recycled. Landfilling and incineration is the backup. The world doesn't want to see plastics in the ocean. The world doesn't want to see greenhouse gases being put into the sky. And our technology helps make that easier. I'm Matanya Horowitz, the founder and CEO here at AMP Robotics.